to a Friday edition of the Tackle Trading Halftime Report. As always, on a Friday, this is Coach Frank hanging out with the one, the only, the impeccable Coach Matt Justice as we get ready to dial in these markets. We got earnings. We got gold. We got uh, some volatility and uh, a little bit of grumpy price action, Maddie. It should be a, a fun show here today. But before we dive into all of that, welcome out, Team Tackle. Always great to see you. And if you're new around here, welcome. Always uh, nice to have you hit that subscribe button. That helps us, of course, but hopefully it helps you be alerted anytime we're going live or adding anything new. If you like it, like it. Share it with a friend. You know all of that fun YouTube stuff. And if you haven't had a chance to check out the most recent edition of the Decoding Buffett, uh, series here on the YouTube channel. That's a good weekend uh, watch for you. I would definitely encourage you to check that out. Fantastic. Heard lots of great feedback, Maddie and, and Mark. I know you're not here with us, but uh, I'm not surprised I've heard that great feedback, but good job there. Keep them coming. Uh, Maddie, how you doing today, partner? Doing good, Frankie. Excited to be here uh, with the crew to break down the Kickstarter earnings here today. We uh BlackRock, JP Morgan, Citibank, Wells Fargo, all reporting earnings, but you know, I think uh, I think there's a couple instruments that have captured the attention of uh, the market and not just us at Tackle Trading. Uh, we're <laughs> always uh, on that gold conversation. Uh, I think we were born into that gold conversation, quite frankly. Uh, we're always on the energy and oil conversation. So I'd like to welcome the market to uh, the gold and the energy yeah, conversation. <laughs> it's fantastic. All you need is a uh, an Iranian threat against Israel to bring everybody on board to the gold and the energy conversation. So uh, obviously we'll be uh, breaking down a little bit of their momentum and shifting uh, momentum a little bit here today. Consumer sediment uh, dropped as well today. And we're going to end uh, today on a edition of Frank's charts uh, here as well. So uh, we got a lot to talk about here today in the halftime report. Yeah, absolutely. I am all for it. Uh, well, let's uh, let's start where we always start, Maddie. Let's start with the uh, with the S and P. We're in an interesting spot on the uh, on the futures on the on the S and P five hundred because you've got that combination of that nine on the weekly and the fifty on the daily, kind of right there, putting up the the fight. If that gives out, and that's an if A then B, you do kind of open up into a little pocket to about five K, at least from a moving average perspective. Obviously, we are still. We don't even know if we're going to give up the the, the nine on the weekly and then the 50, uh, but we're looking like we're going to test that 50 today, right? Coming in pretty hot, not much of a bid on the buy side really at all here today. What you seeing? Yeah, I'm seeing the exact same thing here, Frankie, and I don't think this is a changing condition here today. I think it's a continuation of exactly what we have been seeing over the course of the last uh, week, week and a half or so, ever since we saw the initial dose of volatility and we saw the market getting a little bit more sensitive to the economic data it's it's been a volatility party uh over the course of the last yes. few days uh on twitter the other day i was like i, I don't understand the vix i i don't i don't get it <laughs> We're, the market is screaming uncertainty here and the vix was like at at 14 You're taking a nap <laughs> it, it's waking up a little bit here uh it was being mispriced earlier this week but in general, I don't see this as a as a changing conversation at all today. I feel this is the exact same energy we've been seeing over the course of the last week, week and a half. It's the exact same behavioralisms we've seen from a technical perspective. Big up, big down, big up, big down, but overall just a little bit of fading price action. Um, you saw the, the, the last dose of earnings reports we've seen over the last couple of days getting priced into the lower side of the equation. And, and, you know, the context on this one does matter, Frankie, because a lot of this is simply where we're at in relationship to the overall trend. Yes. We're obviously showing some weakness at the, at the top end of this very consistent longer term trend. The consistency is gone. The trend is gone. We, we said that last week. There's, there's, no, there's no bullish short term trend in the S&P 500 right now. You have a longer term trend that is bullish. You have a short term trend that was neutral as of last week. And now with a little bit of a violation of short term support, I think you could look at a little bit further downward moving in price, maybe even looking at a short term downtrend against the backdrop of that longer term uptrend. And so I do think I do think one of the most important concepts when when you start going through this type of volatility, at the top end of the chart, again, I'll say this for the, I think, fifth or sixth time this week. Patience is a position. Earnings is going to be vitally important, and the bulls are going to need a catalyst uh, to to continue the the, the longer term trends. 
And until we see the combination of those things, it's sitting on your hands uh, a, yeah. a little bit from a short-term trading perspective uh, within the S&P 500. And especially until we start getting into uh, what I would say Netflix and, and Taiwan Semiconductor and a, a little bit more of the growth side of the equation uh, from uh, from an earnings perspective. We're not going to we're not catching any themes today from an earnings perspective. Today yeah. is the kickstart uh, to earnings. So when you're looking at where this pullback could occur, uh, could come into it, the the most important thing is to identify those key levels of support, and and you have a couple that you that you can anchor against right now. One, you got the fifty on the daily chart. That's right around fifty one fifty. If you come out to the weekly chart, that nine EMA right underneath the price action is right around fifty one sixty. And so you got the nine EMA right around fifty one sixty, and you got the and you got the fifty period SMA on the daily chart right around fifty one fifty. Both of those two levels are going to be very important to see. Is this just a short-term bump in the road, or is this the start of something more? Is If this is the start of something more, and we're going through what is known as a traditional correction in the market, which you could expect a 5 to 10% pullback against the top price, well, if, if that's the case, then the 9 EMA is not going to hold. And so I do think the first thing you're looking at is that combination of the 50 on the daily and the 9 on the weekly basically between 51, uh, 5150, well, it's like 5147, but 5150 and 5160 and said, all right, can we get a little bit of pivot action, uh, pivot action at those levels? And if we do, then this is just a short-term bump against the longer term trajectory of what's happening in the market. But there's also scenarios that could play out here to uh, that, that goes through what I would describe as a, a, a market correction. And market corrections are not abnormal. In, in fact, they're very, very normal. Even in some of the uh, most parabolic great markets uh, you can you can point to of the past, 2021, 2017, 2013, 2024. Well, in those environments, you had multiple times where you uh, you you had corrections in the marketplace. Corrections reset price action. They reset they reset the the overvalued conversation. They're actually very very healthy to go through profit taking environments where you you know bring in a little bit off the table and you sit on your hands for a little bit and you wait for a a little bit of a clear uh, clear clear uh, clear skies a little bit better price action so to speak. If we do breach the 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 fifty one fifty level. That's where it gets really interesting, Frankie. That's where you start getting into deeper correction territory and that deeper correction territory. You come out to the longer term chart, for example, the the uh, 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 the uh, monthly chart here, you got the five EMA right there at about uh, 50, 35. But I kind of see the combination of a 5K conversation here, Frankie, mm -hmm. that that could be in line. And so you really got two zones that I'm that I'm really kind of anchoring against in this correction territory. The first one is 5150, the combination of the 9 EMA on the on the weekly chart and the and the 50 SMA on the daily chart. And then you got that significant whole number right right north of the 20 period moving average on the on the weekly chart, and that's right around 5K. So you, you're certainly going through pullback analysis. And in pullback analysis, when you're looking at out on a daily chart, you just track those moving averages in the depth of the retracement conversation. Well, you can do the same thing in overall market corrections, right? Market corrections, the, the language of market corrections and how we describe them as general market participants, they, they can create a little bit of fear in the market when when they're really natural price action they're they're really normal quite frankly and we shouldn't get too crazy about a market correction against a parabolic uptrend and so if if we do go through that market correction it's just a matter of tracking that what i would describe as the depth of the retracement conversation on the weekly chart that's how you appropriately track a correction against the market it's not necessarily on the daily chart. It's more on the weekly chart. And those key levels right there would be around 5150 and 5,000. Love it. Love it. I, that's, a, that's a great deep dive. And it's always nice to hear because that's kind of where my brain was too. It's always nice to hear you're not out on an island, right? Uh, other traders are kind of latching into the same ballpark, at least, uh, that uh, that you are. Um, 
and I'll just say, be as, as 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 direct and clear as I can. I have zero desire to fight this price action as a bull. Like zero no. desire. Um, let it play out. Let it play out. I cannot say that stronger. Let it play out. Let the volatility play out. It always does. And let's see if we can get a reversal happening on the short term. And, and when we do get a reversal, I'll tell you right now, you can go to a lot of places in the financial markets to get content. You will not find a better place in tackle trading and reversal analysis content. No, sir. It, it, it will not happen. It will not happen. We lead that charge. And so we're going to be breaking that down through a reversal analysis. And we have not seen an inkling of reversal analysis yet. So you got to let this one play out. Yeah, absolutely. And just, you know, think about how, quote unquote, easy or much easier it is when the trend is, is strong, right? That's where we want to take advantage of it, right? I don't want to go first. You don't want to go first. Oh, and quite yeah, honestly, you know, this is a this is a big stretch, right? The way the calendars fell on April, I was complaining to Maddie about this in the pre-production, that basically the month of April is off the table, minus two days, uh, you know, the, the very last two days of the month. For, for earnings trades, right? Our official stance at tackle trading being, you know, two, uh, two weeks or 10 trading sessions, that kind of takes all of April off, except yeah, the Monday and Tuesday, the very, uh, the last two days. So it really is fine. You know, this is a good time to do it. If you, if you want to correct, if oh, you a, want it, to chop, right? They, this is the a market good time could to do not it. have picked a better timing to shift volatility than a week before earnings when we're all just sitting on our hands due to we're all just 230 and... different SP 500 components reporting over the next two and a half weeks. It, it, exactly. Exactly. And I think you nailed it. I mean, this is part of the, the deal, right? Uh, we go on these great runs and then you got to clean up, right? Got to mm -hmm. digest it. And, uh, and selling is not necessarily an unhealthy thing. Uh, appreciate that, Maddie. Are you seeing, I mean, this feels like an overall market move. I know we've kind of talked about, you know, the small caps, the arcs may being a little bit relatively weaker uh, in, in this type of environment, but are you seeing much different uh, in the overall indexes off of the SP? I know everyone's going to have a little bit of a different look, but are you seeing it generally the same? Yeah, generally, I'm I'm seeing this the same. The Nasdaq here, obviously, very growth oriented and and sensitive to all degrees of data. Just a lot of volatility. Doesn't have a true direction yet in the in the Nasdaq. Nasdaq just does look a little bit better than the overall S and P 500 does, um, but that's a little bit of the 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 big cap mega cap tech playing out over the last few days that got a little bit of a bump up in price versus what the S&P 500 was doing. Uh, when you're looking at the other indexes and, and the Russell 2000 specifically on the Russell 2000, the Russell 2000 is not going to do good in the face of the, the macro conversation that we've been having, meaning dollar up, yields up, economics, you know, a little bit of, mm -hmm. you know, contraction there. It's not going to do good in that. The the small cap area of the market, very economically sensitive, obviously, very sensitive to monetary data. If if that was going to run on that mid-tier breakout, it was going to be on the on the interest rate cut conversation to allow the the small and mid-cap stocks to kind of breathe a little bit economically. But that obviously has not been the case as we've been going through that double dip inflationary conversation. That, and, and there just hasn't been a real reprieve on that double dip inflationary conversation yet. And as there hasn't been a reprieve on the double dip inflationary conversation, there's been zero reprieve on the dollar. And so if the dollar's not going to stop and the dollar has not stopped, Which if cooking. the dollar's not going to stop, I'm sorry, the market's not going to stop until the dollar stops. Yeah. These two will run opposite of one another. And so the dollar... I, I saw I saw a lot of people saying the dollar's overextended at, as of right now, and it's slightly overextended, I would say, but it can run. The dollar can yeah. absolutely run still, and it can run all the way up to 107 before you start getting into some technically concerning areas of resistance for the dollar. So as long as the dollar is going to be hot, it, it's it's going to cool off the marketplace. And so I think it's simple, as simple as looking for slowing momentum in the market waiting on positive catalyst, uh, catalyst on the market and letting this dollar and yield conversation play out in the short term. Yeah, that's very, uh, very spot on. Uh, I would 100% agree on that side of things. Well, you are seeing uh, some, the first thing isn't Matt said to me. One, just real quick though, Frankie, yeah. isn't that one of the most important things as traders you can do is spot the when not to push the, the agenda? To, yeah, when to, when to pull back, when to say, okay, I'm this whatever was happening 
that's over. This is something new. And there's nothing wrong with being a coward, right? You know, there is nothing wrong with, with saying, hey, I'm going to let somebody else fight this fight. I'm going to let things clean up. I'm going to let volatility drop down. I'm going to wait for an easier, easier condition, right? Uh, that's That can be easy in hindsight. It can be hard in real time, right? Because we're people and and uh, we go through all of those emotions. But I mean, that should be the goal for all of us as, as traders, right? Let things line up. When things are lined up, it just tends to be easier than when you're fighting the tape. No, I, I, I'm i sorry, Frankie. I was uh, laughing at uh, James' uh, double dip inflationary comment. I apologize for that. Oh, um, no, you don't have to where, apologize. Where do you want to go? The double I apologize. Dip. No problem. Well, I do want to go to gold. That's where I want to go. The very, literally the first thing Matt said to me today, the very first thing he said when uh, when I jumped onto Zoom with him was wiki wiki price action in gold. Uh, it wasn't good morning. It wasn't, well, what's up? Uh, it was wiki, wiki, <laughs> cold. And I'm, I'm here for that conversation. Uh, Maddie uh, really got running. I mean, we were running hot. We were running heavy and not just in gold and, and silver and uh, metals in general. But so gold. many commodities were just on yes. fire from last Going. night till tomorrow, this I mean, morning. Just, just insane, right? Run, 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 run. Of course, we've kind of flipped the script here kind of come back to reality, at least on the intro, on the day uh, chart here. What do we see? And I mean, obviously, this volatility is interesting. I know that the big picture backdrop of gold isn't changing for you, for me, or for probably any of us here at Tackle Trading uh, ever, but certainly not on this candle. Uh, but what do we kind of see in here as we are working into, say, the next week or so on gold? Um my long-term opinion on gold is, is I think everybody understands. Yes, <laughs> I, I say it every been, day. Yes. Um, about a few months ago, I basically just made a decision that, you know, I, I'm not going to break down gold from a swing trading perspective because I don't want our community to, to have that mentality towards gold. Right. That I, I, I wanted to, to really kind of, force the longer term conversation a little bit. Um, and I, I still maintain that. So like, I, if you don't have gold, I don't, I don't care what it is. This this environment, gold is screaming at. Yeah, it, it just is. Now, in the short term, however, you, you can't you can't not see that wick in, in the immediate short term. And and <laughs> it was fascinating this morning, Frankie. Yesterday, we were having a conversation at the end of the show regarding covered call analysis uh, on GDX. And I started the conversation basically saying, nah, I don't want to cover GDX. I ended the conversation by saying, okay, I'm going to cover 36. <laughs> um, because, and, and I, I have a hard time seeing GDX above 36 in the short term. I, I, I do have an opinion at 36. And so I felt, okay, you can cover it at 36. Um, I immediately regretted that when I saw gold last night going just parabolic. It was right. up 30 <laughs> points in the overnight action. And then you knew what was going to transpire through the European session. So it's just like, all right, let's, let's get ready for some uh, aggressive cover call management, uh, hypothetically. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, GDX gaps up, starts running, right? Running, running. And I'm like, hmm. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna force me to make a decision here, aren't you, GDX? Uh, no, they didn't. They didn't. It came right back down, and I started embracing. Oh yeah, great decision on on I did it <laughs> on that uh, cover <laughs> of GDX yesterday. Um, but uh, it, it's it just goes to show you that uh, you never know what you never know what's going to transpire when you make a decision in the marketplace. Um, whether you were covered or not, I don't think there was a wrong answer on that one. By the way. Um, I, I would suggest the price action at this point does suggest covering at 36. Um, whether they did, whether you did that on GDX or your gold position or not, I do think the price action today does does suggest get that thing covered at 36 and let the price action play out. What, and, and again, I might have a different opinion if we were down here in this environment, but we're not. We're so elevated in the environment. And so you're a little bit overextended and you are seeing uh, some wickety wick action, some aggressive profit taking, I would I would say, on those wicks, both on GDX and on on gold. So in general, my opinion is not going to change based on a wick in today's price action against a parabolic uptrend in gold. 
Um, but in general, typically these types of wicks do signal uh, uh, the conclusion of the short-term momentum is, is what oftentimes they do signal. And, and for example, there was a moment back here, Frankie, where you had that, it was a gap up on the futures open and it, it, it ran. Cheated. Yeah, it, it just ran. And I was just like, this is insanity to run this hot against that trend. And what occurred was it came right back down, reestablished. This was in the breakout of 2K, by the way, when it was running hot on that breakout of 2K. Came right back down, established that 2K as the support level, and then just gave us the beautiful, beautiful trend we've, we've had here over the course of the last you know month or so. So there is a couple examples in history. I, I, I believe I can think of three off the top of my head that wickety wick price action at the very top of a parabolic uptrend where gold got a little bit out in front of its its skis a little bit and had to come down in an aggressive retracement i'm not calling for an aggressive conclusion to this uh, coming right back down i am suggesting that we could see some consolidation Good here job. a little bit similar to this price action here a little bit more that than this, if that makes sense, Frankie. Yeah, I and think so, that makes perfect sense. And so we could we could go through a little bit of consolidation here. Yeah, I think that's a good call out. Whenever you kind of get that volatility at the top, it can lead to short term. You got to take a bath, right? Uh, and I think the 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 one from about uh, from from last month is a really good call out. Uh, in particular, if you kind of buy into the fundamental side of it, which, you know, obviously uh, I do, you do. Uh, I think that's a, a really good call out. I do think you nailed it. I think that this is the kind of signal, maybe today's not the day, maybe you already did it, but I do wouldn't be, I, I would call this the, the the area to start to be getting back into the covered train as well. Yeah, it just feels, it feels like, a, and again, it's the wick at the top here is is concerning. That does lead to a, a conclusion of the trend oftentimes. The ultimate question is, do you get this beautiful consolidation where you can add above the above, say, 2400? We'll, we'll just yeah. call it right now, right? You, you'll discount that wick in the analysis the same way we discounted this wick yes. uh, against 2200. But do you get that beautiful consolidation over, say, a two-week stretch here? Or do you get something like this where it gets choppy due to what's happening on the dollar? I I don't know it, it, because the price action is very similar in both in both situations. That's why I think you got to let it play out a little bit. Um, James, thank you for that, James. By the way, um, what James said in chat is is something I said in Discord earlier this morning, and I'll I'll, I'll just read what I said in Discord earlier this morning because oftentimes these conversations when because gold analysis is all over the market yeah, right now. Yeah. yeah. It, it, everybody's talking about it. Everybody's tweeting about it. Everybody, it, it, my goodness, it's on CNBC. And I, it, like, literally, I criticize CNBC because they never talk about gold. And then when they talk about gold, I'm like, please stop talking about gold. You don't know the <laughs> asset class. Um, it's, it's a weird one there. I'm sorry, CNBC. You can't win on that one. Um, but uh, it, it's just, I, I see it a lot where at the end of a conclusion of a trend, when so many eyes are on the topic and there's people on social media using the analysis to get visibility and, and don't get me wrong. Like I'm not criticizing that in any capacity. What I'm suggesting is sometimes for people that kind of find these instruments at the end of a trend, they are the ones that want to jump in head first. And it's like, no, be patient, wait, you didn't, it, it, your, your, your desire to immediately run out and do something because of what has been tra transpiring in the past is not good enough in terms of the analysis. And so it, what I said in Discord earlier today was I said, if you ever get a sense that you're that you missed out on something, chances are you you probably did. However, it's important to remember that missing out on one opportunity doesn't mean you miss out on all of them. Trading may involve quick decisions, but in a, but it affects and but it, its effects are seen over the long haul. And investing truly unfolds over years and even decades. So don't sweat the small stuff. Keep your eye on the larger picture and prioritize your education to ensure that you prepare for future opportunities. 
And and so I just wanted to say that because again, it's so true. It's so true. It, it's it's extremely true. And and I don't put a lot of mindset into my daily communication, but I felt it was it was needed in this current moment because we are seeing things specifically in the gold market that are completely abnormal against any historical conversation and specifically the dollar versus gold but it's also what what gold is doing right now in 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 general i don't feel you've missed out on gold i don't feel you've missed out on bitcoin i don't feel you've missed out on ai i don't feel you missed out on these long 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 term stories bitcoin is a long 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 term story Gold is a gold is a six thousand year old story. Don't fret over a one day price action, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, and so, if if you feel like you missed, don't don't fret. Get prepared for the next move, and and where that next move will come will depend on basically how you're reading this chart. But in terms of what I'm seeing here, I'm going to be tracking the the comparison of this this consistency of the of the consolidation versus this. If you start to see volatility coming down even more, 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 that's going to remind us a little bit more of this number than this number, if that makes sense. And so don't fret. Like, yeah, does it look like the current trend, not the current trend, but the current leg in this trend is over? It it does look like that to me. Um, That's why we're embracing a little bit more of the covered call conversation here to alleviate a little bit of that. But at the end of the day, if you don't have gold, do you really think gold's going to just stop doing what it's been doing in the face of the inflationary conversation, the debt conversation, the geopolitical conversation, or the other 14 different data points I can point to to, to, to indicate why gold should go higher in, in, in the long term, not the short term? In the short term, let the technicals play out. In the long term, that macro analysis is going to play out because it has been playing out. Yep. Yep. Love it. I love it. Uh, gold is always so interesting because when you go on these huge ru- big runs, and gold does doesn't do that a lot, right? But it it's done it before; it'll do it again. It's always a mixed feeling, right? Uh, because you love gold, you like it going up, but you also prefer it to be a little slower because you have that longer term, you know, hat on as the primary. So it's always this weird weird dance in your head right i i don't <laughs> love when gold catches momentum at the top end of a trend not not historically no it, it's it's not a positive sign they, i know it feels that way in the in the moment but it's usually not um i i expect a little bit of consolidation here i think the best short-term ad situation would be a high base dialed in at 2400 i yeah, think that's yeah, the, the it, best technical pattern that three weeks and that wouldn't develop. take much no, it'll take another couple of weeks. Kind of maybe the, not even that. Yeah. Wouldn't take four or five long. trading sessions. I don't think it would take much. So no, that nine catches up, gives you the springboard. You get a little intraday. Yeah, I could see oh that. Oh my too. goodness. Is you're the best, brother. Did you hear what is said? What's that? It says gold know. rhymes with hold. I'll take it. I will take it. Uh is I'll uh it. I'll give you uh I'll give you a gold star for that one, my friend. Yeah, uh, that was good. That's a good one, yes. <laughs> That is nice. Well, let's shift over to the other commodity uh, that's uh, always on our mind, our old pals at Crude Oil. Another wiki wiki type of a candle and environment here today. Definitely see it on some of the gold stocks. Uh, anything to see here? I mean, I know you're going to have the 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 big macro backdrop, right? Uh, well, is that really what kind of led to this? That's the entire conversation today is the Iranian uh, threat against Israel. There was a report one of the reasons gold was moving last night and obviously crude oil last night and today was there was a report out of, uh, I, I forget where it came from, but there was a report uh, that uh, Iran was planning on a uh, on an attack against Israel and perhaps some U.S. assets in the Middle East. Um, and it's one thing for Iran's proxies to to take their cheap shots. It's another thing for Iran to directly attack Israel. Because that most likely brings the U.S. involved a little bit more aggressively. That would be an expansion of the of the Middle Eastern conversation. And if you do see a legitimate expansion in the Middle Eastern conversation, um, 88 is not the number you're looking at here. 100 is the number you're looking yeah. at here. Um, and so you had a little bit of that. And, and that's kind of what's playing out in the, in the commodity space a little bit here today is the ultimate fear of of Middle Eastern uh, geopolitical military expansion versus 
coming back down to some degree of reality today, whether or not it's at what, it, what it really looks like and how big of a deal it really is. Um, so you're, you're dealing with a little bit of volatility here as, as due to geopolitical situations. Uh, the volatility here is not, ab- it's today, I meant, it's not abnormal versus what we've been seeing in the last three to four, five trading right. sessions, honestly. Uh, there's a lot of volatility here. It's a tough, tough one to read in the ultimate short term. So, yeah, it uh, again, it's one of those that you wouldn't mind it taking a little consolidation time. Uh, we'll see if you can uh, if you can get that uh, overall still looks pretty solid. Right. Uh, energy in particular, it's it's it got hit today. Right. Uh, as you can see, Larry, looking at that action today, a little little fake out and kind of coming back. It hasn't really given anything up. Right. So you got the fake out that you can still have base. It's still high base. Right. It's just uh, a high base with a, a little bit of a wick. So it clearly, to my eyes, at least, it hasn't broken the energy charge. I don't think I saw one that I would consider broken uh, as I was scanning today. Uh, but mess got them a little dirty for the earlier part of next week, if nothing else, uh, I, I would imagine. And that's a pretty broad theme in the market, uh, but definitely noticed it in energy. Top of trend problems. Yeah, they exactly. Top yep. of the trend problems. Uh, still a very intriguing place, uh, no doubt. Uh, no Enough doubt. Candle to to think about, you know, doing anything aggressive going into the weekend, though. Yes, yeah, it's one of those that uh, let's let's let this one kind of dial in, see if it still looks like a high base on Wednesday, right? The yeah. Zone holds the the nine holds. You get a little back and forthy. And you can kind of discount that wick because you know why it exists, right? And it would be one data point. I could easily see being very interested by midweek. I have a hard time being super stoked today or on first thing Monday morning. I wouldn't mind a retracement here. I wouldn't mind a retracement. Uh, A retracement would make a lot of those energy stocks look really, really good. It would make some very compelling uh, entry uh, entry points because we are, you know, extended in a lot of them. Right to to what one degree or another, especially on weekly charts. Yeah, I mean that especially that, on weekly charts. We ran so hot. I mean, we V-shaped into a. I mean, a major. That wasn't just a. I mean, that was a major level of resistance, right? And now, then just this pushed isn't right even it. a pivot, Frankie. No, like, we didn't. The even pivot get a, goes from here. Like this is a fifteen percent upward movement in price and energy without a pivot. Now you have a pivot at the top here, obviously, as we're seeing the high base come in, but and that's just a, it's a historical move without a pivot. That's a big move. Yeah. A, a retracement would be pretty uh, okay. Pretty for, decent. It, it would be pretty decent. Uh, you, you, you're okay if you don't get, and I'm okay if I get one, cause I'm going to have to get out of these things anyway. Right. Uh, earnings for them are coming pretty quick too. <laughs> so, so uh, it'll be, uh, it will be fun. Well, uh, last but not least, Maddie, let's take a quick trip to church. It'll be a quick trip to church because, well, Bitcoin just uh, kind of hanging around in that range. Nothing has changed technically to me. I don't know. I doubt. I seriously doubt anything has changed technically to you. I uh, either want to dial in that breakout, and it's trying to dial that in, right? Uh, I don't think it's doing a bad job of doing so, or get a little bit of a deeper retracement in Bitcoin. I don't think anything has changed for me from when we were here on Wednesday. I'm pretty sure you're going to say the same thing. The current analysis still suggests a 42 breakout on iBit. You're not sniffing that right now? No, it's, uh, it's not a today. It's a not a today conversation. I uh, do like the dialing in and the longer we're in this range, you know, the, the more I'm going to like that if and when it breaks, right? Uh, <laughs> so we will see. Well, uh, that is going to do it on the skyline portion of the halftime report, uh, Maddie. And that, of course, means it's uh, I can officially now, you know, because I you threw an earnings at me on Wednesday, but I wasn't uh, I wasn't officially ready for it. Uh, I'm officially ready for it now. It is now time. For earnings roundup and stocks in the news, uh, this is the first busy, busy day, right? Still relatively light. You're going to have a lot busier days. You know that. Uh, but this is the first busy day that you get in the it's season. It's the first important day. Like There's been important earnings, yeah, like but there, this is important to the Delta, first important right? day. Fastenal is important to Fastenal, but yeah, yeah this is well, this is that. You're day. also seeing the number one reason why the market is showing volatility today. It, 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 we can talk about the Middle East and we can talk about what's happening with Iran and we can talk about the central bank and we can talk about, you know, double dip inflation and we can talk about 
all the macro elements. But the number one reason why the market is moving down today is because bank earnings were not did not impress, not impress enough yeah. against the top end of price action. They were not terrible. They they were not terrible. This this is a gap down sell down because of where you're at in relationship to the chart. You were at the all you were at the high price for the quarter. You got to produce JP Morgan. You didn't. You got to give that up. This is a natural and normal price action on an earnings report where you do not impress at the top end of a trend. This is about as normal as normal gets in an earnings season. Quite frankly, um, I saw that last uh, yesterday. By the way, in in uh, in the three earnings reports from yesterday. Yeah. Uh, we saw normal, typical price action that that occurred. Last quarter was the abnormal quarter. Yeah, this you, this feels this feels like we're getting a little bit back uh, to uh, to um, uh, to uh, some degree of reality. Uh, Camille, is that uh, most promising EV stock? Um, I can tell you what the most promising EV stock is not, and that is Rivian. Ooh, I, can, yeah, I, 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 can, I can tell you that is not a promising stock. That is a violation of ten dollars, and that is absolutely nightmarish, quite frankly. Yeah. Um, Tesla, I think, is the most promising technical conversation, but Tesla, I can't tell you how important that earnings report coming up is for Tesla. Like, oh yeah. Even yeah. long-term bulls are starting to turn on Tesla, and and due to the margin conversation, due to some of the other ones. So I would say Tesla, for me, above one one eighty on a positive earnings report is probably the most uh, most promising one. Because the other ones are garbage, quite frankly. They're a hot mess of nothingness. Um, that might have been too aggressive, a hot mess of nothingness. But Well, they're they're not doing great right now. Right? They got it. work to do. They got I'll work to do. I'll allow it. Uh, back to JP Morgan very quickly here. And uh, oh, yeah. Okay. So uh, raw numbers here, Frankie. Um, JP Morgan didn't have a bad report. They didn't have a ba bad report here. They actually came in with beats on both uh, both sides of the equation. The banks don't produce uh, guidance. Uh, they they yeah. rarely do. They don't like doing it, even though they have every metric in the world to tell us exactly where the interest rate is. They can't tell us what their own forward guidance is going to be. <laughs> um, but but uh, I'll digest. Um, in terms of their numbers, 444 against 418 on the EPS handle. That's about a 10% beat on the EPS side of the equation. Uh, revenue did go up 21% year over year. That resulted in a 41.93 billion handle versus the expectation of 41.68. The conversation that is happening is on the secondary level in the banks because most of the banks came in kind of like JP Morgan, slight beats, slight misses, but nothing to really concern yourself with from an EPS or a revenue perspective. Net interest, uh, uh, Jay, uh, Jamie Dimon talked about this a little bit in, in, the, earnings, uh, in the earnings analysis, but net interest was uh, lower than expected. And net interest is a metric that you know, analysts will look at, look at the banks to see how, how well their lending is doing. Um, I don't know if we needed to know net interest was lower than expected, to know their lending to consumers is not as high as uh, otherwise in other environments. But um, there, that is kind of where the market anchored against. And I felt that was a kind of a random thing to anchor against. I kind of feel like they're just trying to use that to describe the downward movement in price off a, off a bullish uptrend, quite frankly. Um, I don't have a negative opinion of uh, JP Morgan's earnings report. I do expect I, I, on these numbers, I would expect a little bit of downward movement in price. The gap down and sell down is probably a little bit due to the market getting a little crappy throughout the uh, trading session here today. Um, and so JP Morgan, a little bit gap down, sell down against that bullish uptrend, Frankie, that typically puts you into re, uh, retracement analysis. And uh, that's kind of what we're seeing here on that weekly chart here, Frankie. JP Morgan, I, I, I kind of feel like if, if we get somewhere around that 180 handle here, we might have a conversation. For King's bed um, what's your there? thoughts here? That That's exactly where my head went is don't see myself being interested in the immediate future. But if you do get down into that old, you know, 180 zone, that's old resistance. That's 170 you, would yeah, be a that, reversal at 170 or a king's bed at 180 is kind yeah, of where somewhere I'm in looking. somewhere in in there. And those 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 develop where they develop, right? Uh, yeah. I'm not going to pretend to know where that's going to be, but I think that's really we're the, not going to catch the knife here. No, no, that that's just what the looks going to be is you know you settle into one of those zones, you get the support build, the moving averages, you know, start uh, flipping the other way. 
that's a conversation, you know, weeks away, uh, best yeah. case scenario, uh, realistically, right? Uh, not a not a great look in the uh, well, in the short term. A king's right. bed takes a good king's bed takes uh, it takes, takes a couple weeks. What seven ten days trade sessions? Takes, yeah, I think a couple like, weeks is a good just yeah. catch all number. Yeah. A good reversal could take upwards of. Six. Well, a good reversal could take well, months. Oh yeah, it could take but, yeah. But, but just say a short term reversal against a daily chart, you're you're talking three four weeks. Yeah. Um. And so yeah, it's 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 not a conversation for today, but for today that 180 to 170s, uh, 180, uh, yeah, 180 to 170 zone kind of looks like that uh, support level on JP Morgan. Wells Fargo, we're just going to go down the list here today. Wells Fargo came in with a, a 10% beat on the EPS, very similar to JP Morgan, came in at 126, expectation was 110. Revenue also topped 20.86 versus the 20.19 handle. Uh they uh revenue went up 17% year over year. They also uh, mentioned net interest declining as well uh here Frankie a little bit of a gap down, but not a sell down here on Wells Fargo, as we uh, as we saw on JP yeah. Morgan here, Frankie. You fight back up into fifty eight. There's a clean trigger of fifty eight here. What could be? And there's and there's a lot of history going back in that fifty eight ballpark zone. So they got uh, they got some history uh, in that uh, in that zone. Probably gonna want to dial it in. And if I could kind of paint the picture of the you know King's bed on Goldman or the dial in that breakout on Wells Fargo today, I'd probably, you know, prefer to paint in the picture on, uh, on JP Morgan, just because of that. So zony, right. Do you call it 58? Do you call it 60? I hate that. You know, it, that's just one of my pet peeves, right. Mm -hmm. When it's too zony. And I don't know if it is it 58, 50, is it 60? Is it 59, 12? I hate, I hate that. Cause then I just always default to the just get through it all and then have the conversation, but it is wherever you're coming in at that number, there's some history in there and getting through that would have a multiple time frame look. There's no doubt about that. All right, let's move on. Let's talk about Citibank here today. They got a wide range. Uh, well, we'll ugly. just call that a bearish engulfing uh, candle there, uh, Frankie. Yeah, uh, that is, let's that uh, is let's talk Citibank bearish, here. Bear Citibank had a good beat as well. 158 against 129. Revenue came in above the expectation. 21.10 versus 20.44, uh, excuse me. Uh, that's in the billions. Uh, they also uh, were up 17% year over year. Once again, these raw numbers out of JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, and Citibank, like the, all of them extremely similar to one another. Every single one of them came around in seven to ten percent beat on EPS. All of them slightly beat on the on the revenue side. Uh, Citibank up seventeen percent year over year revenue. Wells Fargo up seventeen percent year over year revenue. JP Morgan up twenty one percent year over year revenue. It's almost like they're getting the revenue from the exact same source. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I had to. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll allow I'm it. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Team tackle. Uh, no, I'm not. Not at all. Not at all. Am I sorry about that comment? Um, but uh, Citibank wide range, a uh, wide range uh, candle here engulfs the uh, pretty much the last six candles here, Frankie. Yeah, uh, what's ugly. your thoughts here? Uh, that's going to have to take a bath. You know, the thing that the my thoughts are this today probably spun. You picked a bad day to report earnings, right? Uh, is is kind of where my head is. It's going to mess these things up. But kind of seeing the backdrop and where they're all kind of sitting into, you know, you clean up. I, I could be interested. I don't know which one's first and who will look the best. They all have, you know, work to do, some more than um, others. If you had to, the Wells Fargo, Citibank's not in the conversation. That that thing's got it. I, I loved your comments. Got to take a bath. Um, JP Morgan, King's Bad Analysis, or Wells Fargo, high base 58 analysis? I think I like the JP Morgan, King's Bad. I like bad. the JP Morgan. I, I, I like can see bad. myself being very interested if we get a King's Bad at that 20 weekly. And I can uh, see myself being very cautious if the market just wants to hum back up into 58. So, yes. uh, yeah, I, I, I kind of like the JP Morgan conversation a little bit more. I'm going to get that on a watch list to track it a little bit closer. Um, all right, frankly, let's talk, uh, let's talk about Larry Fink. Um, I saw somebody call him Lawrence Fink the other day. I'm like, yeah, that's his name, but yeah. we're going to call him Larry. Um, Larry Fink, uh, BlackRock came out here today. They came out of 981 versus 942. Decent beat on the EPS. That's about a 5% beat on the EPS handle. Revenue came in slightly above the expectation, 4.73 billion. Expectation was 4.65. Revenue was up 11% year over year. 
Um, another, not really a gap down here, Frankie, just a violation of some, uh, short-term uh, short term support. I don't see anything, and it's BlackRock. We don't trade or talk yeah, about BlackRock really very often. Yeah, yeah. It's so the ugliest. Of, it's the ugliest. All I see is that big M. You know, all the others are yeah, the, some degree right of top of the chart problems, right? Mm -hmm. This guy here is, is like uh, it's a big old ugly M. Uh, it's not a super good look, BlackRock. Agreed. Agreed. You know, one of the one of the uh, reports I was most interested in uh, today was Progressive. Uh, pro uh, progressive was the number one insurance company in the market right now. And insurance is the number one industry within fi uh, the financial space. If you look at the bank's earnings, banks are expected to basically contract 18% year over year against EPS. Um, insurance was supposed to go up like 36%. It, it, like it's dwarfing what's happening on the on the bank side of the equation. Um, if the financial sector is is going to be a thing moving into the future, talking about it from a consistency trending analysis, insurance is going to have to produce. Part, yeah. The it's banks didn't that. have a high bar to overcome, and they didn't necessarily achieve that. Progressive did, and so do other insurance companies. They have a very high bar, both from a fundamental perspective as well as a technical perspective as Progressive's up what one one sixty to to two ten in the quarter. Yeah, it's it, that's off, right? it, it, the higher the price, the higher the expectations, guys. Just yeah. always think about it like that. When you're dealing with earnings, the higher the price in the quarter, the higher the expectations, because there's going to be a lot of people sitting on profit in the quarter, and they are not going to be uh, they're not going to want to just give that up. And so, it, it, a lot of times, if they don't get quality analysis at the top. They are quick to lock in profit after an earnings report. Um, so progressive here comes in at 321. Expectation was 330 here, Frankie. That's a slight miss on, on EPS. Revenue did impress 18.96 billion. The revenue was expected to come in at 16.88. Revenue up 20% year over year. Um, that's not a good enough report to continue to propel the current trend. It is a good enough report to park it and sit on it for a little bit. What's your thoughts there? Yeah, I think that pretty much nails it. Uh, and and it, this is going to be a thing because, I mean, I, I think you really hit the uh, analysis there on insurance. I mean, it's it's such an important part and it's been such a big leader in the in the sector. And that appears to be going to be the story going forward. Uh, I think you really want to kind of ultimately work through the bulk of them, get through the all states and Angie's and all that fun stuff. Uh, that's all next that's week. And that's, that's all coming up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's uh, all coming up here. I think right now, if I'm looking for this, I I think you're just going in tra traditional. What would you look for analysis, right? Build it, build into that 50 pullback or whatever the case might be going to have to clean up a little bit. Uh, I, I think you, you, you are sitting on your hands a little bit here. Uh, like you said, uh, waiting for a little more, not just on this, but on some of their peers as well. Yeah, and we do get a lot of their peers next week. And obviously next Monday and Tuesday is a big bank day as well. Um, that's when we get the Goldman Sachs and the Bank of America. Yeah, well, uh, yeah. You you get the insurance throughout the week. You get some credit services next week as well. Remember, the first week of earnings, about 50% of everything is financially related. Yeah. Um, it's a big finance week uh, as we as we kickstart earnings and as we do kickstart earnings uh, so far, not a good look so far. But again, it's one day in earnings season. And at no point did we ever think we were going to have a theme coming out of the first day of earnings. And so it's it's one of those things where we need to see Monday and Tuesday to really kind of understand the complete financial backdrop. And we need to see next week to understand the insurance side of that equation, uh, also the regional bank side of that equation, because you get a lot of regional banks next week as well. Um, by the end of next week, I think you got a much better understanding of where finance specifically yeah, yeah. wants to go. And I do think by the, maybe not by the end of next week, but, but by the end of the week after that, I think you'll have a better understanding of where the market wants to go, uh, not just in earnings season. But again, I said this, I think three times this week on the halftime report, and I'm gonna say it again today, we're not here to catch a, tra a trade at the top end of a trend. That, that's that's not why we're here. We we don't do what we do so that we can just parse a tiny little bit of orange uh, juice out of that orange at the top end of a trend. We're here to figure out where the next trend is, where the next leg is in the market, 
the conversations that CNBC is going to be having in six weeks from now, we're looking forward to having those conversations in two weeks, two yeah. weeks from now. Yep. <laughs> and so, yep. <laughs> and so there's a lot of patience plays right now as we kickstart earnings. And as we go through a little volatility at the top end of the trend, we're going to let that play out. And we're going to get into the mode of catching the next trend the same way we did as we caught this trend. And so it, it, you, you get excited over the beginning points of trends and you get less excited over the ending points of trends. But the uh, but again, think about it like this. The ending point of one trend is just the birth of the new trend. Yep, just the new That's one all one. it is. That's all it is. And so let's let that play out a little bit here. Um, that's all I got from an uh, earnings perspective here today. Uh, I would say the best report, I like to give a blue ribbon award here. Yeah, I can't, I can't give that to Jamie, uh, Jamie Dimon here today. He he was talking uh, he was talking dirty a little bit against uh, most uh, macroeconomic situations. Um, Wells Fargo, I, I mean, no, no, I'm not giving a blue ribbon. They didn't. <laughs> the base did not deserve a blue ribbon. I'm sorry. Um, you didn't produce good enough against the top end of trends to get a blue ribbon. And uh, we're not going to hand out participation trophies to tackle trading because we don't believe in participation trophies. So. Nobody gets a blue ribbon here today, Frankie. No blue ribbon today. Yeah, it was, uh, like I said, it's it's very hard to take anything out of it other than fun conversation today, but definitely not a roaring start, uh, right? No, uh, it's the up. starting point of a conversation that has not came to a conclusion of analysis yet. Oh, by a long shot. Yeah, but, we it's, got but it's important of... data points in that storyline that leads to a conclusion. So yep. that's where we're at in the story. It's the it's the first chapter here. It's the it's the intro, right? Uh, it's the intro. Uh, well, I appreciate the earnings roundup. Before we dive into some Frank charts, Maddie, any stocks in the news or anything else you want to hit, uh, my friend? No, this is the kickstart to earnings, and we got a lot of gold and oil and commodity analysis here today. That's kind of where my head was at. Um, and by the way, we are still going to do a short version of rapid fire here at the end of Frank's chart. So Frank's going to bring three stocks to uh, to discuss here today. I'm going to help break down those three stocks um, because I was all in earnings and economics and macro and gold this morning. Um, and so Frank's going to bring three stocks from his scanning. And if anybody in the community has some stocks that you want us to break down for either perhaps hypothetical inclusion into the uh, stock or options report, or you just want to get our analysis on something you're looking at, go ahead and type those uh, symbols. They can be stocks, commodities, currencies. If they have a symbol and they have a chart, we're willing to break it down and help you out. So go yeah. ahead and uh, give me a symbol and uh, we'll have uh, Coach Frank, the master technician himself, break down those charts here in just one second. With that said, Let's talk a little bit about Frank's charts here, uh, Frankie, as we right, uh, start exciting. dialing in our scouting is, reports here. Yeah, this is a fun day for, for Frank's chart. Oh, yeah. Uh, volatility at the top. Day. Everything's disqualified for earnings, but uh, that's not going to stop us, right? And, of course, uh, the last segment that we do every week here uh, on the Halftime Report is uh, Frank's charts. Well, we take a look at a few things that uh, kind of thinking and and I'm, I'm kind of giving Matt the demotion and I'm giving Team Tackle the promotion, Maddie. They're responsible for Wait your second. three now. Is that, uh, is that how we're going to paint it? <laughs> that's I'm how trying, I'm going to paint it. I'm, I'm, Listen, I'm going to get your chart anyway, bro. Yeah, I'm here for uh, that. Uh, I'm, I, I want to see what Team Tackle's got for me. I've got some pretty good deals out of Team Tackle over the years. Uh, I'm not afraid to uh, to do some sniping. Uh, it's a tough environment, uh, just where we are technically in the market, a lot of volatility. And then you add to the fact that everything, you know, in quotation marks, has a ticking clock, J.J. Abrams style, right? Because you have to be out by by the first or whatever it is. Uh, and just with the way the calendar fell, I mean, uh, fell just it, it feels like an old school, like the earning season from like 15 years ago, man. It's like, oh, it's all like in the net. <laughs> what it kind of like, felt like last earning season felt like it was an eight week it, saga. It, did. it, it was felt like it was never ending because yeah. of the calendar. And and this one does feel a little tighter. It, it, does. it does, absolutely. And I felt it in scanning this morning. Uh, but you I, know, I would much drivers. rather have a tighter earnings calendar. Much oh yeah, get it, get. It. I was, I used to be. I mean, I'm, I'm never going to not complain about earnings, right? Everyone knows that. Uh, but it was a lot easier when it was basically a two and a half week pain window that mm -hmm. I could, you know, just basically check out. 
because it was only two and a half weeks, right? Uh, and at least the bulk of the season was over. I could go on and and move on. Now it's like you can't check out because you like are like what you're just going to give take a vacation half the year. Uh, no, give me these concentrated earnings. If you got to give them to me and you do, I get it. I know they're important. That doesn't mean I like dealing with them in real time though. Uh, but we'll get through it like we always do, Maddie. Uh, I'm going to bring a bull, a bear, and then uh, I'll uh, decide where the, where I'm going to go with, uh, with the last one. But don't but, you, can I just say one positive thing about earnings? Do you have to? I do. I okay. do. I have to, I have to, I have to bring I'll some it by liberty saying something. into your hate of earnings. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, yes. I'll let you give a counterpoint. Earnings, earnings sets up the conversations we are talking about in two to three weeks from now. It does. They Absolutely. Do. And two or three weeks from now, I'm going to be on board with that statement. I mean, like, yeah, that's the, that's why you say yeah, it, Maddie. You don't have that conversation without earnings. Uh, so well, you got to appreciate it a little it. bit. Uh, listen, I do not have to, and I won't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, but you're all right. right. Frank, what's you your first pick, Uh Well, what's listen, I'm going to start with uh, with a name that you, that you know. Heck, it even, uh, sometimes you even get mistaken for it when someone says, hey, Matt. You like I say, hey, you talking to me or are you talking? Uh, you talking about a chart uh, here on AMAT? I know tech's been, uh, you know, and certainly not the hottest place, but looking at AMAT here, this is dialing in a pretty darn consistent breakout channel here, right? Right around two sixteen. You've played a lot more defense on these guys than many of their tech counterparts. Still has the overall look of a weird looking cup and handle type of development here. Don't have earnings looming nearly as close as I'm going to do on some other things. And so this is a, a top of the chart type situation, right? These uh, are uh, all time highs on AMAT as you don't need me to tell you that. Uh, I know you're an AMAT guy, but I do I think am. it is a pretty intriguing breakout candidate if we get some bounce back in the space or in the market hold, even if it's just reprieve from, from selling, I could see this breakout candidate being something that would be interesting to me. Applied materials has been on the tackle 25 since all the way back down here. That's how long this company has been in, on, on the tackle 25. Um, and the only way I'll take it off is if it gets a little too high for the tackle 25. Um, but uh, in terms of applied materials here, I love the cup and handle here, Frankie. Um, but the cup and handle is a conclusion on a breakout analysis. So it's breakout or bust here. Yes, and I agreed. do. And, and you also have plenty of time in the earnings conversation. Earnings is you got a month in front of their earnings report, which means you got plenty, got of, plenty time of time to allow this to get dialed in. And the breakout it's pretty clean around that 215 level. You got a wicked 215. You got the bodies. Let me see what the bodies are. Uh, bodies here about 213. So 213 to 215 range there. Um, that's pretty clean for a $215 stock. So uh, yeah, I, I, I like the call up, I like breakout of the cup and handle. Cup and handles are typical continuation patterns that are the beginning point of a new trend. Once again, that's kind of the the theme here today. The ending of a new trend is the beginning of a uh, the ending of an old trend is the beginning of a new trend. Well, that's what continuing uh, continuing uh, continuation analysis does. It resets the previous trend, and it once it breaks out, that is the beginning point of a new trend. See, within a trend, you get patterns. And in those patterns, you get some really good trades within the patterns of, uh, of a trend. But in a trend, you, you every time you get a pattern, for example, every time you get a high base in a bullish uptrend, that's not a new trend, Frankie. That's just a continuation of the previous trend. But when you go through the ending of a trend, the ending of a trend is dominated from continuation patterns or reversal patterns that are extremely similar to one another. The, the difference is what happens at support. And as you can see, as support increases here, putting more pressure on that ultimate breakout of resistance, that's a really good uh, backdrop for a cup and handle on applied materials. So I like to call out the cup and handle looks pretty decent and it's breakout or bust. Agreed, agreed. All right. Uh, well, I'm going to give you a bear now. Uh, there's, there's still, I mean, technically there's more bears in there, Bam, but a lot of things have ran. It's like ribbon. Ribbon breakdown is nice. But that was the $10 breakdown, and now the stock's close to $9, right? It's not that it can't, and you know I don't expect it to continue to fall, but it becomes less appealing from that risk-to-reward perspective, right? So you got some things running, 
But one that was kind of leading the charge and has kind of taken a little breather this week is McDonald's. McDonald's has had a little bit of a drop down. Yeah, we had the big drop down, but then the little bit of consolidation this week as some of these short term moving averages, most notably, of course, that 90 MA have started to catch up. You are in a big pocket, you know, on that weekly chart. You've got a long ways to go until you get to that 200 weekly. So you're kind of in a, in a big pocket into, you know, that 250, 252 zone. So this little low base that's kind of developed on McDonald's does kind of present a relatively controlled new entry. We're getting that five, putting that pressure on. The nine's getting closer and closer. If this breaks, because on the breakdown, I felt that it was going to fill that pocket. Uh, I think a lot of people did. I don't think I was on an island there, but it ran really hot needed to take a break, holding its own, but not doing anything productive, not stopping people out. I do expect that window to continue to fill, working its way back down in towards that 200 weekly. The question is, do we have time between now and earnings to get that far? I don't know the answer there at the very end of the month, uh, but there should be a leg here. This environment, if the market wants to puke up, you got plenty of time. Oh, the market wants to puke. Yeah, yeah, yes, Um, yes. (laughs) If the market wants to puke, it doesn't take long for the market to puke here. No, um, if, if it, I, yes. I have a very negative opinion of McDonald's. I, um, I do too. I, I, do too. I, I think this is turning into an absolute trash company. Um, higher prices and absolute terrible quality. Um, and no, Krispy Kreme isn't going to save them. Um, but in terms of the analysis here in the short term, Frankie, that's a low base against 265 with the trigger uh, trigger pretty clean underneath 265. McDonald's can be... a, a, a I like a vertical vertical spread here, yeah, but I do too. In, yeah. in terms of uh, that would be more just kind of discussion on strategy. But in terms of technique here and stra- and and technicals, anything under two two sixty five feels like it's a two fifty five conversation pretty quickly. It does kind of have that feel to it to me as well. Uh, all right, so I got you on board there. So I got one more here. And uh, I don't love, but I don't hate. And with just a couple of bars, I could really like. So we're going to look at pure storage, PSTG here, and this King's Betty action that it has going on with itself uh, right now. Nice thing is these guys have the backdrop of that earnings, that that recent earnings beat, right? So they did come through with earnings about what about a month ago. I, I remember you doing uh, talking about them. I think it was on the halftime report, or maybe it was just mm-hmm. to to me and probably was both, (laughs) I would imagine, Uh, had the big run up and I was just kind of dialing in that first pullback here. I always am interested in the post earnings. You you are right. The the nice thing about earnings is you get the post earnings, right? Uh, And that you do have to have the earnings first to get that. I like the overall development of the King's Bed that's happened over the last little bit. It ran pretty hot. It was running really hot yesterday. Uh, I do like the fact that we were kind of have the little inside bar here today. I don't think that's a bad thing. I wouldn't mind another one or two going into the first part of next week because that would give me an, at least a, an option for a pretty intriguing tighter stop loss, right? But anything over that high from yesterday, I do think that is kind of a confirmation of this King's bed. I do feel like it's a pretty easy fill to get back up to that you know post earnings uh, high there. The trend would suggest that we can catch some momentum as as well and get through that and carry on. So I I do like this development here. I would love if there were just one or two more inside bars, but no one's going to be surprised to hear me say that, right? Uh, I uh, like that the nine has is holding. I like the kind of king's bet action that we have seen. Relatively, it definitely looks better than the you know the market. So. I'm going to go with uh, with pure storage in this little king's bed here. Uh, hopefully, can you be a nine rider from a stop loss? And I do think you could probably paint that picture today, but one or two inside bars, I think that's a pretty easy picture to paint. I don't, I don't mind it, but I also think it's indicative of everything we've been discussing earlier today. That's what we got out there. Yeah, that's 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 that's, that's what's point. out there right now. Yeah, that's the point. Yeah, is when when PTSG. And again, I don't want to say anything bad about PTSG. They had a fantastic earnings report last quarter, and this looks pretty good. And I do agree with Coach Frank that 58 does feel like it's where it wants to go. Um, but that's the best. But one, but that's, that's, the that's some of the best. If cleanest. that's some of the best you can find, yep, and the it market, is. 
that tells you a lot you it need does to tell know. you a lot it does it tells you a lot uh things are things are a little bit messy things are a little too far away or they're in the process of retracing and haven't built any support to even start to have that conversation uh it is it is not super clean out there there is no yeah, doubt it it's it's not and and again one of the things that I, I think you and I both absolutely love is consistency. 100%. It is the consistency of technical analysis within trends. And we just don't have that right this very second in the S&P and in most sectors right now. Nope. Shifting volatility, not the first day. This is the sixth, like the fifth day out of the last six that we've had this type of volatility in the market. So it's not that I disagree with PSTG, like not at all. I, I agree with your analysis. But again, I think you also agree with me that yeah. it is indicative of, of the environment when PTSG is one of the better technical situations you can find. And and it's not a bad one. It just doesn't have like Oh, you're you, not you, you're not running out to show your your buddies, right? Yeah. No, it's it's, it's no. not take a picture and enjoy this. Uh yeah, it's not, aim at a pretty clean. Textbook. I'm not putting this in a PowerPoint anytime soon. I'm not no, putting no, this. That's, in, that's, no, that's not going on my, yeah. my fridge. Uh, yeah, no. it, it, exactly. <laughs> so I, I, that's the only point I would make on that one there, Frankie. Really enjoyed uh, Frank's charts there, Frankie. I think um, uh, the McDonald's, uh, I, I do like that short, and I do like a couple shorts yeah. out there. Um, but uh, we got, uh, we got uh, some business to get done here in just a little bit as we uh, start getting together our scouting reports, uh, both the stock and the options report. We also put together the Tackle Trading Newsletter, and we are making some modifications to the Tackle Trading Newsletter over the course of the last couple of weeks. And I'm going to be making more modifications uh, to the newsletter over the next few weeks, as well as I, uh, I as I go through a little bit of reformatting on what we're what we're trying to accomplish with the newsletter. Um, I love where we're going with that newsletter, and I do uh, I do uh, kind of the intention is, you know, uh, uh, to to be that one of those flagship products to tackle trading for the pro members that. If you don't have time to attend all the, the halftime reports, because people have lives, they have lives out there, they got to go do right. <laughs> Um, But uh, if you can't attend the halftime reports and you can't hang out with us in Discord all week, that you get the same degree of analysis in a snapshot of all the other conversations that we're having on a week in, week out basis. Um, so definitely, uh, definitely check out the newsletter. We're uh, Coach Mark and myself are. Uh, the two coaches that are really taking on that uh, that uh, the reformatting of the newsletter. And I'm really excited to where that thing is going. Um, and so we're going to go put together uh, the, the tackle training newsletter, the rankings that we put into the newsletter. We're going to go curate our scouting reports, the stock and the options report. And the last thing I'll say, and I'll let, uh, let uh, you have the final thoughts here, Frankie, is if you're looking for an amazing community, if this, if the last couple of weeks and 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 everything that I that we've been seeing in in energy and gold specifically, um, but just the market in general, if you're looking for an amazing community that's going to help you navigate the financial world, that's going to be in front of the conversations that others are going to be having in weeks from now, uh, that's going to help teach you how to do this for yourself, so that you don't have to rely on waiting for other people to tell you what to do then come join Tackle Trading. Be a pro member of Tackle Trading. It is an amazing community of like-minded investors all helping each other out. And we have a tremendous amount of, of stuff in our pro product, guys. We got our weekly reports. We got our mastermind groups. We You get Tackle Discord access. We do daily webinars in our pro membership all the time. But at the end of the day, we just describe it as, a, as the Tackle Trading community. We put education in front of applications so that you can navigate the financial world every single day for the rest of your life. And you don't have to rely on other people and you can just participate in the conversation. So if you're looking for an amazing community, come join us, be a pro member. It's very simple. We don't make it difficult. We don't make it outlandish. We do it. We, we put out more content than anybody else does out there, more high quality content than anybody else does out there. And you can get a 15 day free trial of the pro membership at tackletrading.com. Coach Frank, I'm going to send it to you for final thoughts here today. Well, that's, and, a tough, uh, that's a tough follow. Yeah, that's a tough follow because you nail it on the head. Uh, this is the, the best community out there. Uh, I'm thankful to be a part of it. Uh, we work hard. There's no doubt about it. We have some laughs along the way. Work hard, play uh, hard. Work hard, play hard. 
Uh, some of my favorite people in the world uh, are with us here at Tackle Training. So come on over, join us. Never a better time than a Friday. Uh, my final thought, it's going to be a little messy for the next little while, right? Between earnings and the technical situation, it's messy out there. Act accordingly, right? There's no shame. Maddie hit it hard. You know, patience is a position, right? Doesn't mean I can't and won't take trades if I get a clean setup, but I don't have to sacrifice. All of this stuff will pass. We'll get out of earnings season. We will establish clean trends again. And uh, I want to be here for that conversation, right? So if you feel like you're doing a little less than maybe you were last month, that's normal, right? That's normal this, uh, you know, during an earnings season. Uh, don't feel like you're the weird one for not being there. Of course, if you need me, you can always find me over in the Tackle Trading Discord. Uh, love you. I appreciate you. You guys have a fantastic weekend, and I'll see you on Monday.